Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm here to do my book haul uh, for the month of October. This is all the, the books, I can't even speak, I bought in October. If you can hear fireworks outside, I do apologise. It is bonfire night here in the UK. And even though the weather's not brilliant, there's still fireworks going out there. It sounds like there's, it sounds like a war zone. Especially when they have the big ones go off. I don't like them. So we get started. Okay, so one of the books I got this month, I've just spilt coke everywhere and I'm trying to clear it up. Was Mortal Monarchs A Thousand Years of Royal Deaths by Susie Edge. So, see what I mean? Susie Edge has a TikTok channel where she talks about death and dying and her tagline is, shall we dig up another body? <laughs> um, and it's very good. So basically, how the monarchs of England and Scotland met their deaths has been a wonderful mixture of violence, disease, overindulgence and occasional reasons died. In Mortal Monarchs, medical historian Dr. Susie Edge examines a thousand years of royal death to uncover the plots, accusations, rivalries and ever-present threat of poison that the kings of queens of old face. From the bloody fascination, sorry, from the bloody fascinating story behind the treatment of Oliver Cromwell's corpse, and whether the arrow that struck William II was an accident or murder, to Henry IV's remarkable skin condition and the red-hot poker of Edward II's rear end, mortal monarchs captivates, grosses out and informs. The tales we tell about our leader's demise are never just a story. They are symbolic and reflect how the ruler, their morals and their reign were to be remembered by the nation. And as such, these stories tell us as much about the times in which these monarchs lived. This history forms a rich record, not just of how these rulers died, but how we thought about their reign and treated the human body in life and death. Anything like that is going to really appeal to me. And it's, it's, it's history, it's death, it's quite gruesome in places. It looks good. I'm not a big fireworks fan, I'm going to say that. The next I got a book um, for my Marilyn collection was called Hello Norma Jean by Sue Dolores. It's a novel um, and the tagline is what if she came back? Nice picture from some like it hot on the cover. And it's the last day of July 1999 and a few days before her 37th birthday Kate Davis has a near death experience and a guide back to life and recovery is Marilyn Monroe who prefers to be called Norma Jean. Sorry it's the wrong way around I need a drink. During the next few days, an extraordinary relationship develops between Kate and Norma Jean, which transforms and heals them both. But every relationship has its risks and every act its unintended consequences. Norma Jean's well-meaning efforts to help launch Kate on her new career path go terribly wrong, exposing Kate and her family to new life-threatening dangers. There's a bonus section called a retrospective on the life, loves and death of Marilyn Monroe as well. So, yeah, so that's one of the Marin collection that I will be reading at some point in the near future. Uh, my mum got a book from the charity shop, it was 50p, called A Snapshot of Murder. It's a Kate Shackleton mystery by Francis Brodie. I like these, I love the cover. I wish it was in better condition because I'd keep it probably if I enjoyed it, but it's not good enough to keep. A Famous Village in the Moors. <coughs> Yorkshire 1928, an indomitable sleuth Kate Shackleton is taking a well-deserved break from her detective work and indulging in her other passion photography. When her local photographic society proposes an outing, Kate jumps at the chance to visit Haworth and Stanbury in the heart of Bronte country, the setting for Wuthering Heights. A murdered photographer. But when an obnoxious member of their party is killed, the group is thrown into disarray. Is the murderer among them, or did the loudmouth Tobias have more enemies than they might have imagined? I might have to read this one this month. It's a mystery that only Kate can solve, and armed with her wit and wiles, and of course her trusty camera, sounds like my kind of gal. It's up to Kate to crack the case and get that perfect shot too. Uh -huh, yeah, I'm going to read this. I might have to collect these and get better copies if I enjoy that one. What I found on a shelf downstairs that isn't on my TBR list, but or wasn't on my TBR list, but is now, is another one that we picked up in the charity shops <coughs> for my mum, and it is Bad Air Day by Wendy Holden. So I knew there was one missing when I did my TBR at the beginning of the year, but I could not for the life of me find it. 
Yes, I was downstairs on, my, on one of my bookshelves. What are you saying? She th thought she'd met Lord Wright, but then it all went wrong. Anna's boyfriend, Seb, is impossibly handsome, impossibly rich, and generally just impossible. When eventually he dumps her, she vows to give up men and throw herself into her career, which is how she ends up personal assistant to best-selling author Cassandra. The social climber from hell, Cassandra has a huge house in Kensington, a Philandering, Philandering rock star husband, and the spawn of Satan for a son. So when desperate to escape Anna meets dashing Jamie, a charming heir to a castle in Scotland, she can't believe her luck and probably shouldn't. Obviously a romance rom-com thing. <clears throat> Big historical novel made into a film. Everybody loves it. Philippa Gregory, the other Berlin girl. I have not read this. My mum got it from the charity shop or from one of the neighbours because they do a bit of a book swap down there. Love it. Um, and now it's headed my way. Uh, two sisters competing for the greatest prize, the love of the king. Hmm. I wouldn't want that love of that king. <laughs> a rich and compelling novel of love, sex, ambition and intrigue. The other Berlin. Can't be that much sex because my mum wouldn't have enjoyed it. Introduces a woman of extraordinary determination and desire who lived at the heart of the most glamorous court in Europe and survived by following her heart. When Mary Boleyn comes to court as an innocent girl of 14, she catches the eye of Henry VIII. Dazzled Mary falls in love with both her golden prince and her growing role as unofficial queen. However, she soon realises just how much she is a pawn in her family's ambitious plot as the king's interest begins to wane <coughs> and she is forced to step aside for her best friend and rival, her sister Anne. Then Mary knows that she must defy her family and her king and take her fate into her own hands. So I know people love this. I've not read it, but it is now on the TBR. I bought a couple of Christmas ones because it is a Christmas order from the works. Um, stuff for Jennifer. And I bought a few books for myself. Two Christmas ones. The first one is Christmas for Beginners by Carol Matthews. I actually like Carol Matthews. I've got another one of her books to read. And this one <coughs> says, Christmas is fast approaching at New Hope Farm. Owner Molly Baker is organising a festive fundraiser, but with an antisocial sheep, awkward alpacas and a seriously sequined Santa Claus to assemble. Ma Molly is feeling overwhelmed and in desperate need of some Christmas spirit. <coughs> Despite the chaos of the farm interfering with her event planning, Molly is looking forward to a family Christmas with Shelby and Lucas, hopeful that the holidays will bring them together but Shelby it seems has the ideas of her own of his own Shelby's a boy okay as the so yeah I know a girl called Shelby <coughs> as the fundraiser draws near the team are working hard to pull off a spectacular festive fate and make sure the animals and humans remain on their best behavior will this Christmas be merry and bright or is there more for, than one surprise in store for Hope Farm so I'm planning on reading every Christmas book I can find or that I've got on my TBR next month including this one and Jenny Colgan Christmas at the Island Hotel I like Jenny Colgan as well on the tiny Scottish island of Mule Christmas preparations are even more hectic than usual <coughs> my throat Flora Mackenzie will do anything to make her brother smile. Finton hasn't smiled much since he lost his part to Colton. Before he died, Colton's passion project was The Rock, the rambling disused hotel on the tip of the island. And Flora is determined to help Finton get the hotel open in time for Christmas, transforming the minute into a festive haven of crackling log flyers, fires, flyers? fires and delicious food. But running a hotel they're about to discover is not that easy, especially when their motley staff includes a temperamental French chef, a kitchen boy who can't peel a potato, <coughs> and a painfully shy kitchen assistant who blushes when anybody speaks to her. Can they pull it all together in time for the big opening? And can Flora help her family find happiness this Christmas? Oh, I hope so. Sounds good. I need to change my battery. I'll be right back new battery hopefully this one will last a bit longer okay another one i got from the works is called the killer in the snow by alex pine the first fall of snow can be fatal so it's winter but uh, it is set at christmas so i can read it for my christmas haul um read in december a year has passed since di james walker cracked his biggest case yet and he's hoping for peace and quiet this festive season 
Something across the fells, a local farmer returns home on Christmas Eve to find footprints in the fresh snow that lead down to his unused basement and no footsteps leading away. Days later, his body is found along with those of his wife and daughter. Without a neighbour for miles and there are no witnesses and little evidence and the crime scene has strange echoes of another terrible murder committed at the farmhouse 20 years earlier. That was very loud. I don't know if you heard that, but it was. Very loud. I got this one. This is called Her Husband's Grave. This was literally £1.50 at the work, on the works sale. So I thought I'll pick it up. I had looked at it previously. I thought I'd bought it, but I haven't. I've just looked at it. A hint of gold glistened in the sand. It was a watch. No doubt about it. A watch attached to a body. Criminal psychologist Robin Adams is at breaking point after a previous case resulted in an attempt on her own life. But in the car about to head home, her phone rings. It's Robin's estranged cousin, Vicky Carter. <coughs> Vicky's husband, Simon, has been found buried on Golden Sands Beach. Desperate to help, Robin returns to the coastal village of their childhood. Robin knows she's failed Vicky in the past and is set on making amends. Throwing herself into the case, she's intent on helping the police. But there is clearly someone who wants Robin gone. She is convinced someone is watching her and when she begins receiving threatening notes, Robin knows she could be risking her life. But Robin won't leave again. She owes it to Vicky to stay. So that sounds really good. I'm actually going to close the window. I have the window open because I can't see if the windows are closed. So that sounds like a really good one. Not too chunky either. So let me just put those three Christmassy ones away, ready. I'm going to start a Christmas pile. I've got my Christmas colouring books ready and I'm going to start a Christmas reading pile in my cart in the middle page, middle, right, yeah. Um, I picked up another Taylor Jenkins read book, One True Loves. I'm slowly collecting them. Although I've read Daisy Jones and Six, I had it from the library, so I haven't actually got a copy, so it's one I will have to pick up at some point. Oh dear, sounds like there's uh, something going on downstairs. I think that perhaps everyone has a moment that splits their life in two, and I'm certain that this is my moment. High school sweethearts Emma and Jessie moved far away from home together, travelling the world, chasing every adventure, building a life of their own. 364 days after their wedding, Jessie is on a helicopter that goes missing mid-flight. Suddenly, he is gone. Years later, Emma is back in her hometown. She's grieved. She's learned to live again. She's fallen in love. At a family dinner one autumn evening, she receives a phone call from Jessie. With a fiancé and a husband, heartbreak lies ahead. But is there such a thing as one true love? I really love Taylor Jenkins Reid. I love her writing style. I fell in love with e Evelyn Hugo and this sounds really right up my alley. This sounds really good. I do apologise. Next I got Peter May The Night Gate. This is a Enzo McLeod story. This is number seven. Um, so this one says, in a sleepy French village, the body of a man shot through the head is disinterred by the roots of a fallen tree and a week later a famous art critic is viciously murdered in a nearby house. The deaths occurred more than 70 years apart. Two extraordinary narratives are set in train. One historical unfolding in the treacherous wartime years of occupied France and the other contemporary set in the autumn of 2020 as France re-enters Covid lockdown and Enzo's investigation reveal an unexpected link between the murders, the Mona Lisa. So we read the first six which were all linked by um, this bloke's book. They were the seven unsolved murders um, of France that really Enzo said he could um, um, solve. So this is a seventh book, but it doesn't, it's, it's not the seventh case. Um, which in a way is a shame, because that would have been interesting. I would have liked to have known what happened, uh, who murdered Rafine's first wife. At least, you know, because, you know, I'm pretty sure she wasn't as old as to be murdered in the 1940s. But still, I like Peter May, I like the Enzo McLeod series. So, pick that one up. in Waterstones picking up my classic I picked up two Stephen Kings and the last two Stephen Kings for this year's um, challenge which is Stephen King 12 and 21 as long with the classics 12 and sorry 12 and 22 as well as the classics 12 and 22 
next year I'll be changing the challenges and I'll tell you about that when I do a reading um, plan for 2023 um, and I'm gonna have three challenges but they're not going to be too difficult two of them are going to be very simple anyway so I'll do the one I'm doing for November 1st and they're both chunkers as well which obviously Stephen King's it as you can see I've started reading this because we are in November not very far through it it's very hard to read this in bed which is where I do a lot of my reading <coughs> but Stephen King it is the children who see and feel what makes the small town of Derry so horribly different in the store dreams in the sewers it lurks taking on the shape of every nightmare each one's deepest dread sometimes it reaches up seizing tearing killing time passes and the children grow up move away and forget until they are called back once more to confront it as it stirs and coils in the sullen depths of their memories reaching up again to make their past nightmares a terrible present reality now i read this years ago i saw the original um film version or tv mini series which was the one starring tim curry i haven't seen the remake mainly because i'm a huge tim curry fan and i don't think anybody's ever going to be as good as tim curry at playing anything it's like it's like saying somebody's better at him at playing frankenfurter it's just not gonna happen um so if i was gonna watch it i would be watching the tim curry version maybe one day i'll watch it but mm, yes and for December, I picked up Sleeping Beauties, which was Stephen King writing with his son, Owen King. Again, it's another fairly big one. I have heard good things about this, though. As soon as Fairy Tale comes out in paperback, I will be getting that because um, I do like the way that these paperbacks sit on the shelves downstairs. They look so nice. It doesn't make me look as intelligent as, say, my classics collection, which is hidden upstairs in the bedroom. If I was a real show off, I'd be putting them down never mind downstairs and these ones hiding up the bedroom but I love Stephen King so at this hour we're continuing to follow a breaking story medical officials are reporting the outbreak of what some are calling Australian fainting flu <coughs> around the world something strange has happened to women they're falling victim to a sleeping virus which shrouds them in a cocoon like gauze if woken the gauze is disturbed if the if the gauze is disturbed the women become rabid or rabied in the small town of Dooling, west virginia the virus is spreading through a woman's prison affecting all inmates except for one the enigmatic eve e sorry evie the abandoned men are starting to fight one another while the town sheriff lila norcross is just fighting to stay awake and solve the mystery but the clock is ticking and the women of Dooling are about to open their eyes to a new world together his son actually looks quite like him as well a little focus there they are the pair of them together they're a little fox on the cover I'm not sure what that's got to do with the plot okay okay four more to go yeah the picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde of course is the classic for November <coughs> Dorian Gray is a handsome young man in Victoria England who has his portrait painted by a great painter however while being painted he meets a lord henry somebody who he becomes very close friends with henry's outlook on life is just a little bit cynical he's interested in having a good time and damn the consequences however dorian takes some of that on board he makes a wish he wishes that he will forever remain handsome and young while the painting ages in his stead he meets a girl who is an actor, an actress. She's a brilliant actress and he falls madly in love with her and asks her to marry him. She says yes. He takes his friend to watch her and then she performs really badly because now she knows what true love is. She can't act like she's in love, which upsets him. He calls it off, runs away. He then thinks he's been stupid. He was a bit rash. He still loves her. And he goes back to make amends only to find that she's killed herself. And when he goes back and looks at the painting, at this point, the painting has changed. It's starting to look cruel. And as he ages, well, he doesn't. As he doesn't age, the painting does. 
And this tells the story, obviously, of Dorian Gray and his his fall into madness, basically, I believe. Um, it's the lovely <coughs> penguin cloth band edition for my collection. And I love, love these. So, yeah, looking forward to that. While in... I just have to excuse me because I'm having trouble breathing today. Um, the works. I found a Jack the Ripper book. Didn't know that was in there. Every now and again, you will find something. I haven't got this one, so I picked it up. Oh, just not fair. Try him on. Well, that's the second time today I've done that. Oh, dear me. So this is Jack the Ripper, The Murders and the Myths, History's Most Horrifying Enigma by Gavin Badley and Paul Woods. <coughs> Five brutal murders shocked London in the summer and autumn of 1888. They've never been forgotten. Telling that. The case of Jack, the, the Jack the Ripper case has never been solved. The killer remains a blood spattered silhouette, although Jack as an entity almost certainly was invented by an unscrupulous journalist and he became an archetype, decked in the top hat and, and cloak of Victorian melodrama villain, stalking the fog weather streets of the old East End. <clears throat> in Jack the Ripper, the authors follow the grim homicidal trails that have permeated popular culture for decades. God oh, dear me. <clears throat> it tells the victim's stories in all their desperate poignancy and explores the theories and suspects in the burgeoning field of Ripperology. Conspiracy theories that swirl around the case to this day, from black magicians to the royal family, are considered, as is the modern forensic view of the Ripper's murders as sex crime. So, yes, one for the collection. I'm going to read this. The thing with the Ripper murders is, <coughs> where it says it's a Victorian melodrama villain stalking the fog weathered street or wreathed streets of the old east end is the fact that the nights that jack ripper killed there was no fog because he never would be able to see to do what he did that's the point so it is just <laughs> but yeah i'm gonna enjoy that one my mum gave me another christmas one um this is dilly court uh, a rag and bone christmas it's just like historical romantic fictions that my mum loves. I don't mind them, but they get a bit much. However, Sally's voice was drowned out by the whistle of the winter wind, but she carried on ringing her handbell and calling any old rags and bones. Paradise Row, London, December, 1865. <coughs> <coughs> Snow is falling fast and Sally Suggs is working tirelessly to bring in enough money to keep bread on the table. Her father, a skilled rag and bone man, has fallen ill and now Sally has taken up his trade. This is a man's world and competition is fierce and Sally's rival is F Finn Kelly, always seems to be one step ahead. Her family's only one, oh excuse me, her family's one valuable possession is their horse, Flower, yet with no one to protect them, London's underbelly of black market traders circle closer. <laughs> Sally needs to find help in the most unexpected places <coughs> if they are to survive. Oh, excuse me. I feel a bit rough. Uh, my friend Julie gave me a book and this is called What She Does Next Will Astound You. It's by James Goss. It is one of the, um, it's a novel of the series, the BBC TV series Class. Class is itself is a spin-off of Doctor Who. The series was created by Patrick Ness, so that's that's got everything going for it for a start. We want your stunts, your days, your whatevs. There's only one rule, there's no such thing as oversharing. At Coal Hill School, that takes it back to 1963, <coughs> the very first episode was set in Coal Hill School, things have started to get public. Kids have become obsessed with a website that demands you perform risky stunts. Or tell it your most painful secret. Sounds like TikTok. And Seraphin, everyone's favourite vlogger, wants you to get involved. That's you to get involved. All in the name of charity. At first people just get hurt. Then their lives are ruined. And finally they disappear. As April's fragile group of friends start to fracture, she decides she's going to uncover the truth behind this site herself. Whatever it takes, whoever she hurts, April's going to win. But then, to her horror... She wakes up and finds out her whole world has changed. What she does next will astound you. 
Sounds interesting. Thanks, Jules. So I'm showing this is either a middle grade or a YA. I never actually watched class, but I am interested in reading the book. So that is everything I bought in or was given in October because there's uh, 18 in total. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. What books are you looking forward to reading? What should I be reading next? Obviously the Christmas ones, the four Christmas ones are going for December. Other than Stephen King, which I will obviously be reading in December because it's part of my challenge. December's going to be mostly Christmassy, holiday themed stuff. I've got quite a few of them, I've been saving them. Some of them are short stories, some of them are long, there's murders and all sorts. But what one should I be reading next? Let me know down in the comments below if you've read any and what one you would like me to read first. And I will see you in the next video. Bye, peeps.